All right, just to start things up, no, this isn't an official continuation of the series, and no, that doesn't stop me from wanting to make an online wonders video on it. Not only am I a big fan of the show since the release of the first season, as I have stated before, online creators deserve to be taken as seriously as any official work. However, I'll try to keep my thoughts as straight as possible since every person here is working out of love for the series. But since I do want this series to matter, I will provide straight feedback on where things can improve on since fanmade or not, if these people are interested in being more than fan workers, it's fair to feel open to observations, especially since this will be an ongoing project. Also, instead of making this a retrospective or total drama, I should let you know the series seems to expect its audience to have at least watched the original season with a few holes being filled by your own imagination. But long story short, Total Drama Reunion is a fan-made conclusion of the show's original cast, taking place with Chris still in jail for all the events they came through the main run of the series in the island. However, Chris gets to be released by corporations in order to work on an anniversary season, celebrating 15 years since the original show came out, although I think it's been actually 14 years, but nonetheless, all of the characters which shown to have grown the proper age since those events, get pretty much kidnapped and sent back to the island, which seems to not only be abandoned, but with the hazards being stronger than ever before. A simple yet charming premise on a show that was always focused on a simple yet charming formula, and I will give props to that factor. Script-wise, it does feel loyal to the series when it comes to characterization. My only exception will be Courtney, since I don't quite remember her being so fixated on the events that happened on the show to the point of going after Chris the way she does. And I won't talk too much on the story since again, it's just the first episode. But I do want to bring the positives regarding the elements that we are shown. Given the context of the opening scene, Chris going all out of his way to put the people that were thrilled to see him in bars in such circumstances feels entirely within character as well as some of the jokes that he delivers. What? Show land in the swamp? Probably. Saying goes for the emotional buildup. Adam Blue, the creator of Blue Productions and main writer for the show, clearly loved the relationship aspect of the show, since that's majorly what's building up to. From Wen and Trent's love, which was one of my favorites in the original, Courtney and Duncan's opposite attitudes, to even Heather and Owen's friendship, since Owen's pure heart nature seems to lead somewhere for her. That's as far as I can go without jumping too much into assumptions, but for the first part of the opening episode, I think this is a solid start. However, with that said, I do have some observations to make, since again, I'm taking this project as seriously as the people in Blue Productions are taking it and deserve to be taken. Presentation-wise, this looks great. The character designs, storyboard, and compositions not only look really well, they also feel very loyal to the original show, to the point where if you just showed a random person screenshots of the official and this, telling them apart wouldn't be a very easy task. However, the animation is very limited. I mean, call me impressed on the fact that only two people work on the animation for the show, with Adam Blue being the main guy in charge of the supervision of the entire show. It's clear that there was a lot of effort on his part. However, it does show that only two people worked on the animation. To put it briefly, there aren't really that many in-between frames of animation during motion. It majorly works through keyframes or twins, making the movement really stiff and more animatic than animated. Which again is the result of not having the same amount of people that the original show will have rather than poor quality. I mean, if two people wanted to put the same quality than the original did, which had at least six different animators and separate members in the art department for the first episode, editing and post-production, chances are it will never come out. The one thing I will definitely say that could be improved no matter the amount of staff is the sound mixing. More specifically, the lack of background music in plenty of areas. Don't get me wrong, there are solid pieces of music throughout the episode in order to create the intended emotion, but silence is more prominent during sequences or some tracks don't get mixed up too well during the editing. Another thing now that we're talking about the subject of audio is the voice acting. Now, all these people seem able to make an authentic representation of the characters and their personalities. It's clear that they are fans of the series and managed to bring the characters to life rather than the voice actor then play them in the original. In other words, then trying to voice people rather than actors, if that makes sense. However, all of them work on their own audio levels, which does end up losing itself during the mixing. I don't think any of them have straight up bad audio, but I think it could be worked around during the editing. Until we have our justice. Justice will come in time. I hope so. Performance wise, they're starting up and doing this out of love for the series as far as we know, considering this is most likely a non-profit fan base project. But since they're putting their heart into it, I still say they can improve on them, to make their voices have stronger tones in order to fit with the expressions on screen, even if it's a minor role like a news host. 
recently released inmate and total drama host Chris McLean has announced a brand new season of the once infamous reality show. We sure are excited, aren't we, Jan? We sure are, Tom. Again, a lot of these things are completely fair for a starting point, especially when the team for the production is as small as it is and doing it without any financial motivation for all we know. But these points need to be acknowledged one way or another since not only is it worth addressing any areas to grow if this manages to get a bigger team or a bigger audience, but majorly, and this is most likely a personal thing, I don't want to undermine this project in any sense of the word. These people care about this project and their respected contributions to it, and it's easy to tell that there's a huge amount of effort and detail throughout the entire project, and I was seeing that passion the entire episode to the point where I think it will be way more disrespectful to just let the project be and see it as something made by fans than see the potential, point out my personal observations in where the series can improve in hopes for this to get better each passing project. They may be fans doing something based on a project they love, but they're still doing animation, voice acting, writing, editing, storyboarding, and overall creating something for people to see. And I want this to succeed in order to give both Brew Productions a proper name online, but to also show the people behind the original show that there's a lot of people that love what they made. So please, if you're a fan of Total Drama, show your support by watching it and share it to the people you think can get a kick out of this, because this deserves to be shown. It's made with passion and care by fans for fans. Just prepare for a couple of cut corners. Blue Productions, I hope the effort pays off and I'll be sure to watch this project all the way to- God damn it! Alright, let's address that elephant in the room, shall we? Because just like we can go on about this with Nintendo, it deserves to be brought up here as well. Press TV, or better said Popcorn Digital, went out of their way to demand the cancellation and removal of the video. In fact, I only managed to get the footage of this video thanks to re-uploads by multiple people. And I'm gonna save time for some folks, I legit support the people that are showing the support to this. Because in 2021, this is a joke and companies need to start opening their minds about supporting creators. Now, I understand that Fresh TV has all the legal power to do things and I'm also aware that for a lot of people this is a very delicate matter because they cannot stand the idea of fan projects getting attention or support from their own IPs. And I also understand completely that being legal is all they care and need in order to make the actions that they desire. But once again, if you're a prominent online consumer, you'll know that going after fan projects like they were the enemy helps absolutely nobody and it hurts more than what it's supposed to help. Not to mention this is a project made by the community that even if it had a patron, was made by people that loved the official project and supported just as much as they did with this project. The community and fan projects are not the company's enemies, at least not by default. In fact, according to Blue Productions, the patron wasn't even the problem, they simply wanted it taken down, so the argument of making a profit out of it falls very short if you're that kind of person. Undertale, Minecraft, Sonic the Hedgehog, most of Valve as a whole, they're all IPs that I guarantee you wouldn't have kicked off as big as they did if they went out of their way to chase down every fan project out there. In fact, that was kind of a selling point for Sonic Mania as a whole. And guess what? Their communities made the brand look better and supported to the point where they not only made more money, but also saw talent with the potential to make something great for them. Now, Blue Productions and members of the cast are okay with this, and at the end of the day, it's all within the layers of legal work, so objectively, as long as the ideas can still be utilized in the form of a comic book or different means of distribution, then it's all good and I hope the project doesn't stop. But subjectively, and with the last decade of evidence that fan projects can lead to better places for both the creators and the official release, I think this decision is outright close-minded and it hurts the image of the brand way more than they claim to protect it. Hindsight has been a bitch in the last few years at showing that being legal doesn't mean right and that illegal doesn't mean bad. I know, that's an incredibly bold thing to say, but I've seen way worse and more mean-spirited fan projects for multiple IPs that simply get a pass by the official creators. Hell, in this case, there are channels that flat stole the official episodes. And that's fair game too? Huh? To the point where I can't help but feel that the only crying Total Drama reunion made in Fresh TV's eyes was to be popular enough to trend on YouTube and to get the attention that they should be getting instead. Like I mentioned before, just because they have the right to do something doesn't mean that they should. And Christian Potenza's response doesn't help the argument in the slightest as all he comes down to is just the fact that the only reason why they did it was because they could do it. And I'm nobody to tell the people on Brew Productions how to feel, let alone how to react about all of this despite them trying to just move on to the next thing peacefully. But I'm sorry, you people were treated poorly and expecting people to not react about it after reaching the hearts of millions with just one episode doesn't really solve anything. 
In fact, it makes a practice that's as old as the internet looked like it was an actually good thing when, as I stated, it's been proving to bring more negative since it treats its community like the enemy when it's the community what makes a serious war to them. Don't misunderstand me. If you go out of your way to harass First TV and associates of total drama, then that's on you, man. I'm sorry. Nobody has encouraged that, and I hope I never become somebody that does encourage some sort of bullshit behavior. But the online world has proven time and time again that companies working with a community brings way more positives when you know what you're doing. Times have changed and those that used to be kids that enjoy the series have grown up and developed their skills to the point where now they can show potential to be a new generation of writers that care about the project and bring things to a new era. So it does suck when companies try to privatize their brands for the sake of privacy and nothing else, instead of trying to find the means to make the best project possible with the community by your side. But what do I know? I'm a Sonic fan, I guess. If you can find the first part on YouTube, watch it, and if you enjoy it, show Blue Productions where the support is, and I encourage you guys to do that with every other project you think deserves to be recognized. Leave me a comment with a show online or a fan project that you consider that it deserves more attention than it already has or to be talked about, and I'll be sure to give it a shot. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you later. Now, at the time of this upload, I'm most likely going to be streaming an Ultra and Run for Breath of the Wild with the charity cost to him my mom's medical treatment for osteoporosis. So please hop on if you can, and if you cannot donate, just be sure to spread the word or to simply hop in so we can have a fun conversation. I'll promise to do my best to entertain you. Take care.